Huh? Oh, Traveler, who are all these people? Friends of ours! Allow Paimon to introduce Xiangling, Guoba, and Kuching. Kuching? Uh, of the Qixing? She's the, um, the, um... Hi. It's not that. It's... I mean, I'm just your typical commoner. I've never met someone as high up as the Yuhang before in my whole life. Look at that strong body, those powerful hands, and honest eyes. This guy must be a really great chef. So, is there something I can help you with? You've come a long way out to end up at Wangshu Inn. Let me fill you in. Oh, okay. I see. Legends claim that the Stove God once appeared at the Guili Assembly. As Wang Shu In is the oldest extant building in this area, any historical texts from around these parts are likely to have ended up here. Is there a room in this inn for storing books? And if there is, do any of them mention the Stove God? Well, now that you mention it, we do have a fair few ancient texts here. I remember looking through an old recipe book once. I just need to remember where they're all stored. If you are happy to wait here for a few minutes, I'll go have a look right away. Oh, uh, Traveler, there's something I need to discuss with you. What is it? We need to pay up or something? What? No, I wouldn't take your money. We're all friends here. I just wanted to ask if you had the time to make a satisfying salad for me. A satisfying salad? What for? Yeah, guy who hangs out on the roof terrace, you know? Good looking fella, not too tall. Shh. Don't you think he can hear you? Oh, right. Uh, yeah, maybe. Anyway, you know who I mean. The boss told me to take care of him, but this guy... Let me tell you, he is one tough nut to crack. He usually turns his nose up at everything that isn't almond tofu. But the boss tells me you once made him a satisfying salad, and it all went down so well. So, I was thinking... Could you teach me how to make it too? That way, I'll have something else in my arsenal. You guys really look after him, huh? Well, that's life, right? You gotta look out for your own people. All right, then. Wait right here. I'll be just one minute. Clock is ticking. 59, 58. Sorry for the trouble, Traveler. Okay. Here you are. Thank you ever so much. While Kuching's reading her book, let's make that satisfying salad. Xiangling, what are you gonna do? Oh, I'd love to come watch too, but I don't want to get in the way, so I'll just stay here with Kuching. Okay, shall we go then? Go ahead and get started. I'll just watch from over here. I only need to watch you make it once to have it committed to memory. All right, thanks for that. I think I've got it now. You got all the steps down, right? Of course. Don't forget, I am the best chef around these parts. Let's go see what Kuching and Xiangling are up to. Kuching, Xiangling, we're back! You finished cooking? Good timing. We finished our reading, too. And? Useful? Or no? Useful. There is a passage concerning the Stove God, and it's not what we were expecting. I quote, <clears throat> 60 miles to the northwest is the Guili Assembly. Many were settled there, where they hunted in groups, farmed the land, and made their living from what the soil yielded. When the Stove God descended, one god became many, all of which were the height of children. As does a star when it descends into the world, so the Stove God went out among the common folk and taught them to create fire. With fire, the people at last learned to make hot food, and they dined on rice kanji and cooked meat thereafter. This is a radically different account from the one given in demystifying the legends of Liyue, and also a conflicting one. One god became many? Hmm. Huh. Does that mean there was more than one Stove God? Taking the text at face value... That is what it says. Went out among the common folk and taught them to create fire. So did the Stove God really go and teach people how to cook firsthand? Now that's a god who truly cared for their people. So we've got two leads, but they contradict each 
other. How do we know which one to believe? By continuing our investigation and reserving judgment for now. Thank you for this text, Yanxiao. It's my pleasure, really. Think nothing of it. If anything, I should be thanking the Traveler. Listen, you've helped me an awful lot. Not just today, but in the past, too. I want to make it up to you properly, and as it happens, things are pretty quiet here today. So, I'd like to take the chance to treat you all. What do you say? Will you stay for a meal? Wow, he sure sounds confident in his cooking. I like that. Confidence is one of the best ingredients a chef can have. I really want to try his cooking. I say we take him up on his offer. It's hard to refuse a generous offer like that. Yes, I think we can fit this in. Yan Xiao, we await your culinary creations with great anticipation. <laughs> I won't disappoint. Everybody, please be seated! You think you own the place? I'll sit here with Goba. No, no, no. No, no. Here we are. That's everything you ordered. that such a gifted chef worked here. The Sen isn't particularly known for its food. Everyone likes a good meal, whether they're staying the night or just stopping by for a bite. We call it an inn, but the fact is it's much more than that. We have to cater to all aspects of daily life to make this a true home away from home. <sighs> Please enjoy your meal at your leisure. I should get back to work now. Yan Xiao, are you taking part in this year's Masterful Chefs? Huh? Y you too? Yep. I've signed up already, and I've got my eyes on the prize. <laughs> Your cooking's delicious, Yan Xiao. I'm really looking forward to seeing you in the final. Huh. Interesting. All right. I'll see you there. What was that? Some kind of power move? No, it seemed more sportsmanlike than that. Yep. He's a really talented chef. His food was excellent, and it showed he has a level-headed personality. That's the kind of chef that could be a match for me. 